What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to automate Google search in Python using Google's custom search API. So let us get right into it. All right, so in order to automate Google search in Python, we're going to start by creating a new project in the Google Developer Console. You will find a link to it in the description down below. And what we want to do here is we want to click on this drop down menu and we want to click on new project. So we click here and then we're going to provide a project name, for example, YouTube search project. Uh, we're not going to specify a location. We're just going to click on create. And then once the project is created, we're going to select the project so that we can adjust some settings so that we can enable the custom search API. So you can either click now on select project here, or you can use the drop down menu to select the YouTube search project that we just created. And now what we want to do is we want to go to APIs and services. So either here from the quick access area, or we can also use the navigation menu here, we have APIs and services, and we want to go to enabled APIs and services. And once we are here, we want to look for we want to search for the custom search API. So just custom search and then enter. And then we should find the custom search API, we click on it. And then we have to enable it for this project. So with Google Cloud projects, we always have to specify uh, which functionalities you want to enable for the project. So we click here on enable, this enables the custom search API for this particular project. But to use it, of course, we also need to have um, an authentication mechanism. So we need to generate an API key, so that we can authenticate ourselves from Python, uh, with this project so that we can actually use the API. So what we want to do is want to go to credentials here in the APIs and services section. And we want to create new credentials. So we click on create credentials, and then we want to create an API key. So we click on API key, this is going to generate an API key. And this is something that you want to keep secret, you don't want to show it to anyone, you don't want to share it with anyone, because everyone that has this API key can just use your API. So uh, basically, you're giving up control over your account if you're sharing that key. So copy it, save it somewhere, preferably if you're doing this in production in an actual project, you want to save it as an environment variable uh, in a dot end file, for example, I have two videos on this channel explaining how to do that. Um, and then you want to load it into Python. For the sake of this video today, I'm just going to load it uh, from a text file. So what we want to do here is we want to go into our working directory, I'm going to create a new file API underscore key. I'm going to paste the key here, I'm going to save it, I'm going to close the file. Uh, and then I'm going to load it from there. Now, the second thing that we need to do is we need to create an actual search engine. So what we're going to do is we're going to go uh, to Google and we're going to type uh, programmable search engine. And we're going to click on the first link here. So programmable search engine google.com. Uh, we're going to click on get started. Uh, and in my case, I already have two search engines here that I played around with, I'm going to add a new one by clicking on add up here. Uh, and we're going to call this YouTube tutorial engine or something like that. We're going to search the entire web. And we're going to also allow for image search. I'm going to confirm that I'm a human, I'm going to create. And the important thing now is that we want to go back to all engines, we want to click on our engine here. And we now need to copy the search engine ID. So we want to copy this search engine ID here. Uh, and uh, I'm going to store this one in the Python file directly, or actually, I'm going to load it from a file as well. Just why not search engine ID, paste, save, close, and then we're going to open up a new Python file main.py. Now, all we're going to do here, or we're going to only use um, the requests Python package, which is an external Python package, we're not going to use any Google specific Python package. So we're going to open up the command line pip three install requests if you don't uh, don't have it yet. And um, then once you have that, we're going to say import requests. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Uh, and we're going to say API underscore key equals, and then open API key, read. And the same thing goes for the search engine ID, search engine ID, read. So we have these two values now in our code. 
And what we want to do now is we want to specify a search query. So we're going to say search underscore query is going to be equal to something that we want to look for. For example, neural nine books. And one simple use case of this automation is to just get the first link that we find. And this can be useful, for example, if you have a bunch of company names and you want to find their website or something like that or anything similar to that. So you just want to find the website, the most uh, the most matching website to a given search term. Um, so what we can do here is we can say URL equals and we want to say HTTPS colon slash slash Google APIs dot com slash custom search slash V1. That is the URL that we're going to send the request to. And the request itself will have some parameters. So we're going to say here params equals then curly brackets. And we're going to define a dictionary of parameters of URL parameters. We're going to say the query. So Q is going to be the search query. We're going to say the key is going to be the API key. And we're going to say CX is going to be the search engine ID. And then we can send a request. We can say response equals and then requests dot get. So we're sending a get request to the URL with the parameters that we defined. So params equals params. Uh, and then we're going to say print results. So results like this. Um, and what we can also do, or actually, sorry, what did I do results, I need to do one more step in between results is equal to just the JSON version of the response, so that we have a dictionary. Um, and we're going to what's the problem here? JSON decode error. Let me just see what the response says. Four oh four. Did I mistype something? Google APIs.com slash custom search v one. That should not be the issue. What's the problem here? Custom search was not found on the server. Why is that? Maybe I need to add www in front. Now it works. Okay. So we're going to say results equals response dot JSON and then print the results. Uh, and then we're going to look specifically for the first URL. So you can see we get some, um, some some data here as a response. And what we want to do now is we want to say, uh, if we have items, so if items is part of the response, so of the results, we're not going to print them here anymore. What we want to get is we want to get the first result. So the first item here, so results, and then items, and then the first one, and specifically we want to get the link of the first one. So in this case, this was uh, this would lead us to the neural nine book page here. Um, all right, so this is one basic use case. Uh, another thing that we can do is we can also search for images. So we can say, okay, given a certain search query, provide me with some images. So for example, I could say something like uh, top 10 Linux distros or something like that. Or maybe let's go with something else. Let's go with cats, because then we will find a couple of images here. So I leave everything basically in the same way. So I basically just have to change one parameter or add one parameter here, which is the search type, the search type is going to be equal to image. And this will give us images now to the given search query or for the given search query cats. By the way, one thing that I forgot to mention is that per day, you have 100 free re uh, requests. So you can use this API for free if you limit yourself to 100 uh, searches per day. I think you can also expand this if you um, add a credit card, you can uh, do up to what was it 1000 or 10,000 or maybe 100,000 requests, uh, but you have to pay for it then, but 100 per day are free. So what we're going to do now is we're not going to get the links. Uh, or actually, we're going to get the links, but we're going to get different links. So um, 
or actually we are going to get the links, but we're going to do it in a different way because we don't want to get just the first one. We're going to say results is equal to the JSON object, but we're going to get the items right away. And then we're going to say for item in results, we're going to get from the item the link. Oh, actually not from results from the item. And now we got a bunch of images here, you can see we get a cat here. We got a cat here. And we get a cat here, which is actually the same one, kind of. Okay, so this works. All right, so this is, for example, image search, you can also specify different parameters, like for example, um, we could say something maybe like news. And I could search for images of news. And I would get very current events. Uh, okay, no, this is maybe I was wrong about this. So okay, I got a lot of uh, logos. So maybe we can look for current events or something like that. Or maybe I have an idea of this doesn't work. Mm, I have an idea, maybe we can look for US elections. Or not elections, election, maybe. Uh, and we should get maybe something that's up to date. I'm not sure. No, this is just explaining. Okay, this, this is just very generic again. Um, I mean, yeah, okay, this is some data that's probably somewhat up to date, I guess I'm not American. So I don't know. But the idea is that we can now go ahead and limit the search to a certain um, time frame. So I can say date restrict, which is another parameter that I can pass here. And I can say that I want to restrict this to 2021. Uh, 1st of January, and then I can say, colon 2021. Uh, 1231. Or actually, let's go ahead and do this 2016, for example. And let's run this. And then I will get older stuff. So at least we get different stuff. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it seems like we have I'm not sure is this current is this is not current. Again, I'm not American. So I don't really know. Uh, but you can this is a thing you can definitely restrict the date. Um, I don't know if this is a good example now, but you can specify that you're only interested in results that lie in this time frame here. So that's a very useful feature if you're looking for some old stuff, or only for um, current events only for current uh, results for the latest results, so to say. Um, what else can we do, we can also specify a file type. So I can say, for example, Python tutorial. And I don't want to get images, I don't want to get um, just links, I want to get a specific file type. So I can say here file type. And I can say that I want to have PDF files. So uh, what I would do in this case here again is I would just run this code, and I would get a bunch of PDF files. So for example, here, whatever that is, I'm going to save it. We have some Python tutorial here as a PDF file, and you can just go through them, you can combine them with other restrictions, maybe you want to have certain, uh, a certain time frame, maybe you're looking for uh, a specific search query here, a different one. So not just Python tutorial, but Python tutorial, Python 3.10, or something like that. Uh, that could be an idea. And another thing that we can do here, the final thing that I want to show you and you can get creative with this, of course, this is just uh, those are just some generic examples. Now, you can build this into a project, you can use this to autofill data, you can use this to um, build data sets by looking for images, for example, of course, take care of the legal aspects of this, but you can use this in very creative ways. Uh, but one thing that I want to show you here now is that if I look for the term, football, for example, in Europe, football means soccer. So uh, kicking with your legs, basically. And in America, football means American football. So NFL. And what you will see here is that if I say the search type, or actually, let's let's not look for images. Uh, what I can do here is I can specify the location. So I can say LR. And I can say that I'm looking for language underscore English. So en, and then I can say GL. And I can specify that I'm looking for US. So United States, America. And then you will see something interesting. If I do that, you can see NFL is the first result here. And I'm sure we're also going to find some some uh, 
some soccer probably, but you can see that the first result was NFL. If I change this now to UK instead of US, you will see that the first thing I get is football, so soccer and football again, and also uh, football manager, which is soccer, I guess. And then we have um, Liverpool, which is also a football team, uh, a UK football team. Uh, and probably if I change this to, I don't know what the correct uh, symbol is, probably DE for Germany. I think so. Yeah, we get first of all the German Wikipedia article for football. Uh, we get German websites. So you get the idea you can and I think here the interesting thing is if I say football in German, because in German football is not called football, but there's a German word for it. And if you specifically look for football, you're most likely going to get American football because that's what we associate um, in the German space with football. So you can specify here the language and the region uh, for the search and you will get different results based on that. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.